is Alice from Grow Abundant Gardens, and today I want to show you some of the features of Organi Organic Elk Pro version 7. We've added a few things, mainly uh, looking at uh, the carbon to nitrogen ratio of amendments and giving a little bit more options for carbon-based amendments. So first let's get started, and this is our standard form here. Um, starting out with a soil test report, I'm going to enter the report name. I've already, actually, I've already entered uh, my test report here. Just put in the numbers. Uh, this looks just like the Logan Labs form. So I've just entered the numbers um, where they go. If I didn't have just a standard M3 form, I could click this and also enter the, the numbers that come with the extra test. And if I have the Agdyne 3 test, I um, can enter those as well. There's a few additional values that uh, come in with that test. But I just have a standard M3 test, so I'm going to, going to just leave that there. This particular soil has a pretty low exchange capacity. Um, so that would, to me, that would indicate that this is a sandy soil, and I normally set the defaults to 65% calcium, 15% magnesium. I'm liking more potassium these days, so I've set this to 5%. Um, I think that's good. 1% for sodium is fine. Phosphorus, let's say that I don't want 250, let's say, and I don't want 200. Uh, just, just for... <laughs> um, <laughs> chuckles here. We'll just say that I want 225. So I've selected other and I've uh, put that custom amount right there. Um, the, the sulfur, I would just leave that on auto unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, that's The auto will calculate that pretty well. We have a target pH here and the target pH is for lowering the pH of soils. This particular soil uh, has a pH of 7.3, so we're targeting taking it down to 6.8 um, with, and that will, organic health will do that with ag sulfur and uh, figure out how much that is needed. So a few more options on this part of the page, so let's just click more. Um, if I was in a situation where I was adding calcium and I wasn't happy with the ag lime versus gypsum choice that I was getting, I could turn this on and put in the percentage of ag lime that I wanted. So for example, if I wanted 50% ag lime, I could just put that in. You know, if I wanted 20% uh, or so on, you can click this up and down. Here's the elemental sulfur target. This is one that Erica really likes to look at. You can talk to her about that. And I've got one more option here. I can also change the default targets of boron, iron, copper, manganese, and zinc. These, this little note here tells you what the defaults are. But for example, if I didn't want two pounds per acre, I could just drop that target to one. So let's just go ahead and do that. And carry on down here. I see that for this soil, I must have entered everything correctly, and uh, it looks like I probably got a good test because I don't have any alerts here. If I did have an alert, for example, if it was telling me that my soil might be fizzy, but I had already done a fizz test, I could just, and it was negative, I could click this on, and that would override that and uh, give me a set of recommendations. But uh, since I don't, I don't need to click that. I have put in an area of 100 square feet. I could choose other units here. And I've put in a depth mix amendments of, of 6 inches. In reality, I may just be putting these on the top in a no-till situation, even though I'm putting on enough for 6 inches. I'm being mindful of those um, amendments that are not going to be mobile in the soil. and maybe changing those out or waiting until I can till those in to put those in. 
So here is where uh, nitrogen has moved to, or where I choose the nitrogen amount. So I've got a got a pull down for a number of different options, or I can just enter uh, whatever nitrogen amount I'm looking for. So I'm going to just put in 160. In this case, it'd be in pounds per acre, um, and that will override this 150. You don't need to choose uh, other. If I wanted to use the original organic health pre-selected sources, I click that on. That would normally come pre-clicked on. And then I'd have my, my pull-down menu where I can just pick whichever sources I'd like. Or I can enter one of my own here, put in the NPK value for it, and also select what type of amendment it is. So we have a number of different types of amendments here with different carbon to nitrogen ratios. Um, in this case, we're, we're interested in calculating a, a final overall carbon to nitrogen ratio for the amendments, the carbon-based amendments that we're going to apply. Um, so if we're using this particular part of the form, then we'd want to select something, or you can just enter your own carbon nitrogen ratio there. And um, but we're not. Let's not use that part right now. Let's just click that off and go ahead and look at the next tab where the additional NPK sources are. And these are carbon-based NPK sources. So in this case, we're we're going to be looking at and paying attention to the carbon to nitrogen ratio of the amendments that we're putting in here. Whoops, this one I see has already <laughs> been defaulted to, to poultry manure compost, so I better put in chicken manure compost here. And I have chosen then that with a C to N ratio of 7, and I'll put in uh, 3 to 2 here. And let me check a, pick a few more. Let's just pick a regular uh, compost. This is maybe a homemade compost. So I'm going to choose a CDAN ratio of 15. One thing about the plant-based composts is that they are really um, have a very high carbon and nitrogen ratio, or they can. Um, they may not actually uh, be able to deliver any nitrogen in that case. Once the carbon to nitrogen ratio gets over 20, really you're not going to be uh, delivering any carbon. But, but in this case, as a mixture with other things, um, that's going to be good. So let's choose another one. I know this soil is very low in phosphorus. Let me just show you here. Um, yeah, we've only got 56 parts per million of phosphorus. And so I'm going to put in a just a, a phosphorus-based um, guano, in this case. The down-to-earth seabird guano I know is a 0, 11, 0. And since it doesn't have any nitrogen, it really doesn't make any sense to look at the carbon-nitrogen ratio. Um, so I'm just going to put that back on. It doesn't really matter what you put in there. Since it doesn't have any nitrogen, it won't be added into the calculations. And then finally, I'll put in a feather meal just to top up any um, extra nitrogen that I need that I haven't supplied with the other ones. And I happen to know it's a 1203. So these are in order, and basically they're in order of preference. You know, if I if I have uh, material that I want to use, I shouldn't be like putting in five other things and then putting it in as the sixth material because uh, chances are it won't be selected quite as easily. So let's go ahead and start trying these out. Oh dear. First thing I notice is that I'm not getting any chicken manure compost recommended. And that probably is because there's already adequate potassium in the soil. I have, let's get these out of the way here. 
I've chosen a potassium target of 5%, and this particular soil has potassium of 5.89% already. So Organic Elk is trying to not uh, give you any excesses, and so therefore it won't recommend any amendments that will send you into excess. But there's a way to override that feature. You know, if you want to use compost in particular, it's nice to be able to override that. So here I'm just um, checking the box there, and we'll be adding potassium. See, now we're, we're actually recommending the chicken manure compost. We'll be adding potassium, and but we'll be keeping track of it as well. So um, you'll see it's not showing up here because we it's not a percent of target, right? We're we're ignoring it when we're looking at the percent of target because we've already gone over the target. But we're going to keep track of it and um, show you that at the end. So let's say I want to add just five pounds of chicken manure compost. And the same thing's going to happen here with this regular uh, compost. Let's just put in about 50 pounds of it. Um, see, we're still pretty low on phosphorus. And rather than adding rock phosphate, the seabird guano is going to be a lot more available. Um, and you know, I'm just going to tick this on up until, oh yeah, there we go. So I've gotten to 100% of my target of phosphorus. So that's that's great, just using the seabird guano. It's going to be a lot more available than rock phosphate. So I, I like using that. And let's see here. Oops, forgot to enter the carbon nitrogen ratio for feather meal. Now it is a pelleted animal product. I'm talking about the feather, feather meal pellets. So that's... Some people classify it with a blood meal. Um, however, it, that's only in the really powdered form. When it comes in the pellets, we're going to use it this way with a carbon nitrogen of 6. And once again, it's got potassium in it. I'm just going to keep track of that. And, uh, oh, uh-oh. Not going to get to use any because we, oh, well, get to use it a little bit, less than a pound. All right, so... That's good. So now I have my carbon-based NPK amendments. And down here, I've calculated my overall carbon to nitrogen ratio. And I'm happy about this. It's uh, adding more than the soil tends towards 10 on a carbon to nitrogen ratio. So if I add amendments with a little bit more carbon than nitrogen, I'll be adding carbon rather than reducing the carbon supply in my soil. So I'm pleased with that. That's why we'd like to know that, is just to make sure we're not adding some really heavy-duty nitrogen uh, is going to deplete all of our carbon. Unless we need to. Haha. <laughs> you know, for a side dress mid-grow, yeah, we may want to. Um, so here's the amendment recommendations, and you can see we've got our usual um, in this case, it, since uh, kelp has potassium in it, we don't really want to add too much more potassium, so we're only recommending azomite for trace minerals. Um, and there's our compost, chicken manure, the down to receiver guano. There's the sulfur to reduce the pH, gypsum to supply sulfate for this crop because our sulfur was low on the soil, and these other Amendment C feather meal, there it came in at uh, just 2.4 ounces per 100 square feet. So you get a lot of notes you can read and uh, at your leisure. Under soil amendment constants, this is where the, the mineral amendments live, and, and their constants, their percent by weight that are used in the calculations. So for example, uh, we're using solubore. This is a, actually a little bit different than the default. But for, for boron, we're using solubore. So if I would, whether this was borax, then and I happen to know that's 10% boron. Just change that right there. And if I also wanted to add, say, uh, how about some granite dust? Just to say that we done that and we'll put that on here and we see that now we're recommending 
granite dust combined. That's part of the trace mineral recommendations. So that's all good. Hide that now. And let's just look at the analysis details and see how we did. So we, looks like we've gotten our phosphorus up to 100%. That looks great. Our potassium, we've gone over our target. Um, we were already over our target by almost 20%. Now we've gone over a little bit more, up to about uh, 150%. So, so that's getting up there. We might want to rethink our potassium choices um, for this soil, especially once we start getting up around 7 8% uh, potassium. We really want to be careful to not add more because that can be blocking magnesium and calcium. And looks like we've got our sulfate that we needed. We've got uh, able to put in the elemental sulfur. And uh, magnesium was already high. Iron was already high. The rest of these look like we've gotten everything. Um, looks like, uh, oh yeah, we changed the boron target. So I guess it didn't make any difference changing that soluble to borax because we're not going to recommend either one. But there we go. And then so those all, all look like we've got plenty of everything now once we've made those additions. And here we can see which amendment is supplying what here. So for example, for nitrogen, yeah, we're about half from the chicken manure, half with the compost. Um, we probably are going to want to do a side dress uh, because those those two are um, probably not going to be enough to get us through the entire grow. They, they release rather slowly. Um, also here, our, our seabird guano, yeah, that's most of our phosphorus, so that's, that's great. Uh, that's going to be a lot more soluble than the rock phosphate. And there's our, where our excess potassiums come from, and so forth. You can you can just uh, look at this to your heart's content. We had that little bit of extra calcium from gypsum. So as a note, people do talk to us about this. Um, what would be the issue with, you know, we're adding gypsum to a soil that already has a lot of calcium in it. You know, we're already over our target. But look, we're only adding 24 pounds per acre. So out of, you know, what was 1,500 and 83 pounds per acre. Oh, that was our target, sorry. Uh, we'd already measured 1,642 pounds per acre. So that is a minuscule amount. That is definitely in the noise. So to get the sulfate in using gypsum really isn't going to impact our already high calcium. And, oh yeah, the other other thing to note is that as we, about the potassium, is that since we're adding elemental sulfur, uh, to lower the pH, we probably are going to lose some potassium in doing that, and so uh, that would be another reason to just stay with this um, amendment recommendation. So this is looking good to me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, email myself a PDF of this form. Just click on that, and there we go. All right, thank you for your time. One more thing I want to point out is uh, when you go to enter the next soil test report, you'll need to remember that everything that you've put in here will be remembered in your browser. Um, for example, we had hidden under here, and one more, we'd hidden under here a couple of things. One that we were overriding our egg lime gypsum choice, and another that uh, we had set changed the default metal or default boron target to one. So either go in and turn those off, and you can go ahead and hide them again. And if, you know, if you want to set this back, that's great. Um, it's gonna not remember it until you go other, and there it is again. So we could get rid of that. Or rather than having to do that, um, you know, it can be advantageous to if you have a lot of custom amendments that you want to just keep in here and use, that's great. And likewise down here in the soil amendment constants, if you've changed a number of these, then you probably want to keep those in from time to time. But if you don't and you just want to reset it, you can always click Erase All Entries. 
that's it. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care.